guys! Today I'm going to talk about the 1959 version of The Mummy. It's a Hammer film starring Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee. Starred in 22 horror films these two. And another uh, stat, Christopher Lee starred in 275 films. That's a Guinness Book uh, World Records that. 275, bloody hell, I thought I worked hard. It cost £125,000 to make, but it made 857243 at the box office. So it was another major hit from Hammer. It also it only runs 88 minutes. This film is sort of like an unofficial trilogy. The first film was The Curse of Frankenstein. A year later it was Dracula. And a year later it's this film, The Mummy. It's because all three films star Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee. And all three films were directed by Terence Fisher. So these three films kind of kick-started Hammer off to do all other horror films. you think this film would be a remake of the 1932 version of The Mummy. But it isn't really. It's more kind of like the, the Mummy's Hand. Or the other Lon Chaney Jr. Mummy films. There's only really one sequence that's from the original 1932 film. That's when... One of the archaeologists reads the, the scroll and the mummy awakens and kills. Well, it doesn't kill him, but it drives him crazy. But that, that scene was done better in the 1932 version with Boris Karloff. Another interesting thing about this film is the, the British censors were a bit worried. So they cut the scenes where Christopher Lee gets his tongue cut out. It's a really lavish looking film, actually. This is one of Hammer's best looking films. Christopher Lee's film this, he looks amazing as the mummy. He's tall, but in this film they make him look even taller. The way it's directed and shot and everything. I think it also with him being wrapped tightly in bandages seems to create him like height. Makes him look taller than what he actually is. He's really menacing as well. I like the use of his eyes. Hey, I nearly shit myself when I first saw the bloody mummy. Reminds me a lot of his performance in The Curse of Frankenstein. He was, he had loads of makeup in that film and he, he was really good. I like how he walks as well, all disjointed. He also get a lot of expression in his face. There's some scenes when he, he, he looks sad. Other scenes when he looks really shit scary. It's a, it's a bloody good performance actually. Peter Cushing's okay but it's not one of his best performances. Like the character's a little bit land but he does have a great scene when he's talking to the high priest in the high priest's home that that's really good because there's a lot of tension and interplay between them the kind of talking to each other but the, they can tell the kind of sizing each other up and subtle wording in the conversation it's really good that i like that scene one of the best in the film. Hey, I didn't like the look of that bloody high priest. He looked a shifty looking bugger. <laughs> so the film looks really lavish. I, 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 there's some excellent set pieces. I love the bit where Christopher Lee is the mummy. He falls into the swamp, a crate, and the high priest activates him, and you see him coming out of the, the swamp. Excellent scene, it's really well done how it was shot and everything. I also like the scene where Peter Cushing's father who's gone insane, he's in a padded cell. And it's a really scary scene, this this scene scared us as a kid when I, I watched The Mummy. You see The Mummy outside the room, the guy in the padded cell's been told that um, you can scream all you want, we can't hear you. But if you want us, you have to press this little button. So he's been told that, then next minute you see the mummy outside the little window looking in at him. The mummy's ripping the bars off to get to him. And the guy's panicking and he forgets about the bloody button and he's banging on the door. But the mummy just uh, gets in and kills him. So uh, re re creepy saying that, really good. <laughs> I 
also like the bit where Cushion's character sticks a poker through the mummy and it goes through his chest and out his back. That was uh, really well done as well. There's a good uh, flashback sequence as well. It gives Christopher Lee time to talk and dialogue in the film. I think the, the flashback uh, sequence runs about 20 minutes. Desecrates the tomb. The woman and he, he tries to bring him back to life. And he gets caught and the cut his tongue out and they wrap him in bandages. And they shove him in this uh, doorway. And as, as the door's closing because they're going to bury him alive. You see his eyes, <laughs> he looks a bit scared. It's really good. I, I like that scene. I also like the music in the film, it's very, um, like you can imagine Egyptians and stuff with the music, it's it's really good. It's always fun to say Michael Ripper pop up as well, he, he's, he's in it and he gets killed. He's in loads of Hammer films here. I also like the, I also like the bit where the mummy crashes through the front door of Peter Cushing's home. That, that's a good bit, he just smashes through the door. There's also a scene where he smashes through his windows as well. So he has two attempts to kill Peter Cushing's character. So the mummy says his wife it looks like his old girlfriend that, that he was going to try to activate. She, she looks exactly the same. So the mummy fancies her. So he, he tries to carry her off in, into the swamp area. Hey, the mummy wants to shag Peter Cushing's wife. Hope his bloody mummy fired balls didn't drop off. <laughs> Although this film looks good, it's a handsome production and everything. Looks really good. The only trouble with mummy films is the, the plot tends to be very much the same. The town gets desecrated so he tries to kill the archaeologists. And then he, he sees someone who resembles who he used to like. And he goes after the woman. So it, it, always, it always seems to run the same formula, the films. And that's the only disappointment with this film. It's not, for, it's not very original. But at the time, the audiences would just want to see horror films that were made in colour. Because they were, they were used to universal films. And these films were like more colourful, more violent, a bit of blood. So that, that um, was why audiences were watching them and why they were so popular. It's also a bit tame by today's standards. It's still a good film though, but I wouldn't give it like top marks. Uh, what would I give it out of 10 though? I think I'd give this film about an 8 out of 10. It is, it is a really good film. I did, I did like it a lot. I think for me it's excellent. But I do think going to do like it. I thought it was great, Phil. Top marks. Hard to please, buggy. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Bye, bye.